Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Ba. We welcome those of you who are with us online as well. Today is the seventh Sunday of Easter, and that means next Sunday is Pentecost, which is the day we celebrate the birth of the church, the giving of the Holy Spirit, and that is 50 days after Easter. Can you believe it has been 50 days since Easter? It's tradition to bring out all the red on Pentecost because red is the color of the Holy Spirit in the church. So you'll see red pyramids. If you choose to wear red, that's part of the fun celebration for Pentecost as well. The other thing that happens next Sunday is we begin our worship in the summer schedule. And no time change for us. It just means 8.30 worship is here in the sanctuary 1030 service is outside and then on Monday nights we have uh, not next Monday night though one more week for that uh, we begin our worship out at Marysville so that is uh, a good invitation to enjoy all of those different ways of worshiping God today is an exciting day for us because we expand this church family in receiving new members that is taking place at the 10:30 service but we will hold those folks in our prayers this morning as well and then we are also installing our associate pastor call committee at both of our services and we are so grateful for those folks who have said yes to the call of being on the call committee to find our next associate pastor. Uh, they've already had their first meeting with the bishop's office, and so they are well on their way to getting things started. Their next, their second step is filling out some paperwork that describes who we are as a church to the possible candidates, and those candidates come from a national pool if you have someone that you think would serve well here, that's one of the ways that we get names. They all, all of those names have to go through the bishop's office, but we will be happy to pass them on to the bishop's office if you know someone that you think might be a good fit for us here. So thank you, thank you to those of you who said yes to be on the call committee, and please keep them in your prayers during this time. It's exciting, but it is also a lot of work. You've been hearing us say for several weeks now that VBS is coming up, VBS is coming up, and registration is happening. That window for registering is getting closer, closed more and closed, more and closed, and that uh, is just a reminder to sign up, whether you want to be a volunteer or you have little ones who want to enjoy VBS. Um, we have QR codes for you to sign up that way. There's a board out here for donations if you can help that way as well. Today is the last Sunday before a summer hiatus for our wonderful senior choir. We really do appreciate all of you and the commitment it takes not only to be here Sunday mornings, but Wednesday night for rehearsal as well. Uh, you really enhance our time together, so we thank you very much. Will you help me thank them? Yay. Thank you very much, and I will turn things over to our director, Mike. Of the 
to stand and share the peace of the Lord with one another. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Shall we pray? O God of glory, your Son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Except for the kids, I'll ask the kids to come forward and join me this morning, if you will. Good morning. Good morning. I think we're going to have to ask for some help from our friends in the congregation too, but if you guys want to have a seat, good morning. Good to see you. 
So today, I'm going to talk about choices and the choices that we make. And sometimes, there are, we have choices between like two really, really good things. Sometimes our choices are super obvious. So I'm going to ask you guys, what do you think you would enjoy more, one thing or the other thing? And if you guys will help us too, that would be really nice. Um, so if you enjoy, let me see, I had to bring a list because I knew my mind wouldn't keep thinking. So if my question was, would you enjoy fishing or reading a book? If you would enjoy fishing, if you think you enjoy fishing more, why don't you raise your right hand? Fishing, who are our fishing people? All right, how about those who would enjoy reading a book more? Your left hand. Okay, now let's see, here's another one. Would you enjoy eating pizza or drinking a milkshake? Pizza, milkshake. <laughs> now we have to choose one between the other. So here we go, we're gonna make a choice. Oh, this one's kind of, would you enjoy building a snowman? Yeah. Yes. Yes, <laughs> I would too. Or would you enjoy sledding down a hill more? Hmm. Us. Who would enjoy, actually, would any of us enjoy building a snowman today? No. <laughs> no, I don't think so either, because we like it when it's a little bit warmer sometimes. Let's try this one. Would you enjoy painting or drawing a picture or watching a movie? How many would like to enjoy painting a picture? How many enjoy going to the movie more? <sighs> All right, here is one last one. Would you enjoy eating your favorite fruit or would you enjoy more eating your favorite candy? Those who would enjoy their favorite fruit. How about those who would enjoy eating their favorite candy? Oh my goodness, lots of choices to make. God gives us lots of things to enjoy in this life, all kinds of things. Yeah, lots of things. And we have to make choices. But did you know that enjoying God most of all is the best choice. And here's why. I'm going to show you this. It's never wrong to enjoy other things, but in the Bible it says this. God made me to glorify and enjoy him forever and ever. So right in the Bible it says that we get to enjoy God and all the things that he has made and all the ways that we find joy in him. So that's our lesson today, our, I mean, our scripture reading. God made me to glorify him and enjoy him forever. Let's pray. Gracious God, because of you, we have joy in so many things. Help us to choose enjoying you most of all and forever and together we say amen thanks for coming up thank you for helping us i need a railing there morning A reading from Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set for his own authority, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. When they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, 
which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsively the psalm. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom, but the rebels shall live in desert places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God the God of Simon, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. <clears throat> a reading from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when the glory is revealed. If you are reviled, for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble, your, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to John. 
Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him all authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you, ha you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So, enjoying God is our theme for this morning. I think that few of us struggle to understand what it means to have fear of God, that, that awe of God, or what it means to love God or honor Him or to worship Him and bring Him glory. But to speak of enjoying God, it strikes as somehow a little bit, even maybe odd, enjoying God. So what does God's word say about that? Psalm 37 says that we should delight ourselves in the Lord and he will give us the desires of our heart. Psalm 16, in your presence, Lord, we find joy. The Psalms are filled with all kinds of statements and all kinds of metaphors about enjoying God. And then we have been reading through 1 Peter, and in 1 Peter chapter 8, you hear this. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him. And then this is the peace about enjoying God. You believe in him and you rejoice with a joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. A joy that is inexpressible. And in the Gospels, we have this description of enjoying God, and it's this. It is describing the way a bride enjoys the voice of her bridegroom. That is how we are to enjoy God's voice into our lives and God's word for our lives. So what would your reaction be if I said that actually to not enjoy God is a serious matter? Well, first of all, my mom would say that is not a great way to start a sentence. But to not enjoy him is actually something very serious for us. Why would that be? To say that we are not enjoying God is to dishonor him. Why would that be? To say that something else satisfies you more than God and God's word is the opposite of honoring him. And yet, when you think of things you enjoy, that is exactly what we do. There is a book called The Life-Changing Power of Enjoying God, written by John Piper, and he says this about enjoying God. If our delight or our enjoyment is wholly in God, then our desires will not be for anything that would diminish his centrality in our lives. 
So enjoying God is another way of aligning our lives to God's will. The more we enjoy God, the less potential there is of having our heart turn against trusting in him. In our readings today, we heard about having joy even in suffering. And that is perhaps where that commandment to enjoy becomes the most important. To be able to enjoy God even in our suffering. So John Piper says this about us. We were made for joy. That impulse that we have every day to seek whatever will give us the most joy over something that won't give us joy is something that's inbred in us. He says that comes from God. It is a part of being made in his image. So you heard me share Psalm 37, verse 4. I'd like to dig into that a little bit more. Enjoy the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So what can we notice from just such a small little verse? Well, first of all, enjoy the Lord is a command. Enjoying God is our duty. That seems very strange, right? To enjoy something, it's your duty to enjoy. Why would God be concerned about such a thing? Why would God and his word command such a thing? Is it possible that finding joy in God is something that really truly is central to our relationship with him? So you and I know well that we are to obey God. We know well that we are to honor him with the words we say, the things that we do, and the things that we don't do. We know that we're supposed to fear God with that healthy awe of his majesty. We know that we are to believe God and love God. Is that enough? Well, no. Not according to scripture. Because we are supposed to also enjoy him. And in this book, The Power of Enjoying God, the author says, think about it this way. Those things that you really, really enjoy, those are the things that we value. What we enjoy most are those things that we value. In fact, joy, more than any other human response or experience, reveals the worth or the splendor of whatever it is that you're finding joy in. So that seems like a lot of convoluted words put together. So let me give an example of that. When you find joy in something, it is an unfettered response. So think about how would you describe a grandparent holding their grandchild for the first time? A lot of times we describe that as oh, sheer joy. And that joy is unfettered. Nothing could hamper it. Nothing created it except having that little one placed in your arms. With that kind of joy, your heart just overflows. And you look and see and have awe at such a being that God created. And in fact, in those times, that joy places immense value on that little one you're holding because we say things like she's just perfect my doctor just had a baby and she said to me on friday when i had an appointment with her she said i'm gonna tell you when i asked her how how are things going how's the baby she said i'm just gonna tell you the most perfect baby ever born <laughs> and isn't that how we feel that's that unfettered joy well, the same is true in our relationship with God. Enjoying him, finding joy in God, honors him. And that joy that we find in God is that same kind of joy that just bubbles out. John Piper writes in this book, How is God most glorified in us? Where and in what way is God's glory most revealed? And he says this, God is most glorified in us when our knowledge and experience of him ignite a forest fire of joy that consumes all competing pleasures and he alone becomes what we prize. 
This is why we exist, he writes, to relish and rejoice in the divine so that Christ becomes our all-encompassing joy and sin then turns sour in our souls. We find true joy and delight in God. When we do that, there isn't any room for other things to take up room in our heart. So for the past three Sundays, we have been looking at what Jesus was telling the disciples right before he went to the cross in John's gospel. These words are, in essence, Jesus' last will and testament to his closest friends. We have focused on the fact that in Christ, we have an identity as God's beloved children. We read together, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. We focused on the fact that Jesus is the great shepherd of the sheep, that we are his sheep who listen for his voice and know his voice. And when we hear his voice, we follow it. And in hearing God's voice and following God's voice, we have the testimony from one of our favorite psalms that we will be in green pastures, that we will rest beside still waters. And in all of that, we've talked about knowing what our purpose is in life. Because if you know whose you are, you will definitely know your purpose. And you will know, as the other readings for today said, you will know that even in suffering, even in that pain, those painful times of our lives, we know when we're rooted in that identity, we know that nothing can defeat us. Anything that comes our way will not be able to defeat us because we're standing firm in the knowledge of whose we are and who God is. And that's what enjoying God is about. It is a joy that no suffering can overcome. It's a different kind of joy than happiness. So you know St. Paul, and his life was not an easy one, and he concludes this way, I know I have been brought low, and I know I have abounded in any and every circumstance. I've learned the secret of, of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And then Paul makes the statement that so often we, we twist into something else. So he's talking about living life in the high moments and in the tough moments, living life in plenty and in want. And he says this, I have learned that I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And that is because Paul, especially as we know his former life, has found joy and enjoyment in God. And Paul talks about the cross being foolishness to those who don't know. And even for us, the cross can be looked at as a symbol of joy. How ironic is that? That is a reminder to us, too, that no matter what sadness our hearts might be facing, that cannot defeat us because of who God is. We rest in the all-sufficiency of his grace, enjoying God. Living as a follower of Jesus doesn't come primarily from trying harder. It comes from enjoying more. Those aren't my words. That's John Piper from that book. I, it struck me so when I read those words. I mean, we know, especially as Lutherans, about our salvation coming from Jesus Christ and him alone. So we know about that try harder stuff. But do we know about the enjoying more part? And finding joy in our Lord so that... We are not defeated by the devil and all of his temporary, temporary 
enticements and temptations. The more we enjoy God, the less room there is for the evil one. So God says to us, enjoy and rejoice in him. Enjoying God, John Piper says in that book, Power of, of Joy, he says this, I, the diabolical strategy of the enemy is to, to seduce us into believing that the world and self, in, oh, excuse me, that the world and sinful self-indulgence can do something for our weary and broken hearts that God cannot. Think of Adam and Eve. Anytime we seek that satisfaction, that fulfillment, that joy, that certainty from elsewhere, is when we are being tempted by the evil one. And so that is why scripture says rejoice, find joy in your Lord, take delight in him. Enjoying God can be easily done by paying attention. When we pay attention to all that God has given us, when we pay attention to the gift of the Holy Spirit, when we pay attention that all he has given is for us, then we find no other thing to do other than finding amazement and enjoyment in knowing that he calls each and every one of us by name, amazement and enjoying that he even knows the number of hairs on your head, enjoyment and delight and glory given to him. Because even before you were formed, he knew you and claimed you and called you by name. Let's pray together. Gracious God, full of love, there is much in this life that can steal away our joy. And still, we pray that we might never ever cease from enjoying you. You are holy and mighty. In you, we find our fullness. In you, we find the abundant life. So focus our hearts, our minds, our whole lives on enjoying you. This we pray through the one who brought joy to the world, Jesus Christ, our Lord and risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing together. Shall we pray? Generous God, in this meal we are about to receive, you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth, for in the breaking of the bread, you reveal to us the risen one. And in the pouring of the wine, we ask that you would pour us out in service to the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh, 
invite you to please stand. Let us confess together our common Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us now pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, you have promised to never leave us and have claimed us as your very own. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone. Bring them into the fold of loving communities. Help us to reach out to any in need. We pray for far too many young people in our midst and around the world who battle with anxiety and depression. Lift the stigma surrounding such pain and use us to love, support, and uplift any who struggle. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Embolden us to live with purpose to enjoy you and to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love given in Jesus. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You are the great physician, and you bring your healing hand to bear in ways that we may not even see. We pray for all who are sick and recovering, all who are in need of your healing power. We pray for Henrik Jungren, for Lisa, for Selma Swanson, and for those we name before you in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. God of life, we pray for Mary Lynn and Gary Leff, for Tammy and Natalie and the rest of the family in these days of sorrow after the death of their granddaughter, Olivia. We pray for the family and friends of Jim Swanson in their grief. We pray for all who are grieving and know the pain of such sorrow. May they be given hope and strength through your son, Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing together in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this also for remembrance of me. Will you join me as we pray as our Lord teaches us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As we receive communion this morning, we will receive by intinction, which means you receive the wafer and then move to the next server and dip your wafer either in the wine, which is red in color, or the grape juice. We will also have the gluten-free wafers available over by the baptismal font for those of you who would like that. Come, for all are welcome, and all is prepared.
shall we pray? Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us now to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Now it is a wonderful joy to be able to uh, introduce to you our Associate Pastor Call Committee, and we will install them. And uh, as you know, because we've done several installations lately, when we install, what we're doing is we are making promises to one another and promises of praying for one another and promises of sharing uh, what the future holds together. And so I'll invite the call, Associate Pastor Call Committee to please come forward. The following individuals have been appointed by the Congregation Council to serve on the call committee for our Associate Pastor here at Zion Lutheran Church of Buffalo. And I'd like each of you to introduce yourselves, if you would, please, and I'll give you the microphone to hand down. Good morning, I'm Dusty Finke. Good morning, I'm Diane Paulu. Good morning, I'm Paula Herda. I am Laura Peterson. Chad Peterson. Eric Madsen. I had to steal that from you. I am Heidi Gallert. Right, thank you. I'm going to have you turn around. So you all have been appointed to a position of trust in this congregation. It will be your duty with the, in consultation with the bishop's office to seek out an appropriate candidate for the position of associate pastor at Zion Lutheran Church of Buffalo. You must be faithful in your, in your efforts, always respecting the concerns of this congregation while at the same time maintaining the integrity and confidentiality of the process. Above all else, you must be diligent in your use of prayer so that God's will is done, and it is God who is glorified by your efforts. So, I ask you, are you ready to accept and faithfully carry out the duties of this appointment? If so, will you answer yes with the help of God? Yes, with the help of God. And then I'll have you turn back around to your fellow members, and congregation, I invite you to stand. It is indeed so important that we support one another in this process. The call committee has appointed uh, people to be a communicator, to share with you all that, they, all that they are doing as they go through the process, and we ask that you hold them in your prayers. So I ask you, people of God, will you support these members of the Associate Pastor Call Committee? Will you remember them in your prayers and respect the responsibility of their work and honor their efforts? If so, will you please say yes with the help of God? Yes, with the help of God. I therefore now declare you as installed as the Associate Pastor Call Committee of Zion Lutheran Church in Buffalo, Minnesota. May God bless you with his Holy Spirit, that you may prove to be faithful servants of Christ in this endeavor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And shall we show our appreciation for these folks? Thank you so much. It is an awesome responsibility, but it is also one filled with great joy. And we know that God is leading and guiding just the right associate pastor to our path. So we give thanks for that. I invite you to be seated. Thanks so much for being here.
With all that we are and all we do, we will trust in Christ, live for Christ, and serve with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.